This is episode number 634 of the Inner Fight Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of the Inner Fight Podcast. Thank you to our show sponsors, Smith Street Paleo. Go check them out, smithstreetpaleo.com. Order your meal plan, food, daily, weekly, every second day, however you want it. They've got all sorts of plans going on. The new Flexi Plan is in full swing. And if you want to cook your own food, there's over 100 recipes on smithstreetpaleo.com. Go get involved or drop them an email, hello at smithstreetpaleo.com. They definitely would love to hear from you. No matter where you are in the world, folks, hope that you're safe, hope everything's good, you're taking care of your health, you still know that fitness is the cure. Today's guest is all about memory being the cure. A little bit different, but definitely we draw some links into the world of fitness. Chester Santos is my guest. He was the champion of America in 2008, would you believe it or not, for memory, the USA memory champion in 2008. And in the show live, he took me through different memory techniques, which were absolutely awesome. I learned a lot. Hopefully, you guys can learn a lot that you can implement into various aspects of your life. So on that note, let's jump into today's show, the international man of memory, Chester Santos. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. And as I was saying, no pun intended there, literally mind-blowing, on the line, Mr. Chester Santos. Chester, thank you for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you so much, Marcus, for having me. I really uh, appreciate it. You know, I'm, I'm excited to be on a podcast with so many accolades. I've looked into uh, you and your show and, and nothing but great, great things out there. So thank you. Thanks a lot, Chester. I guess where, where we should kick this off, I, I did an intro there for us. You in 2008 in the USA were the USA's memory champion. Hey, explain to us, what is that? Yeah, uh, good question. A, a lot of people out there still haven't heard about it necessarily. So there is an annual competition in the United States called the United States National Memory Championship. Uh, it's held in different locations depending on the year. Uh, this year, although it's been postponed due to uh, the crisis, it should be at MIT, uh, the University uh, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's once a year and we memorize uh, an, a crazy amount of information in a very short period of time. One of the events is the fastest time to memorize a shuffled deck of playing cards. I used to be able to do it in less than two minutes, sometimes less than 90 seconds. Uh, well, nowadays- it, it's, sorry to jump in there, mate, but I actually have a deck of playing cards with me. And yeah. I was thinking, because I saw this on, on one of your videos, I was thinking that would be quite a good thing to do on the show. Would, would that be possible? Uh, the, the, well, you know, the playing card event itself, I just haven't done it in so long. Um, I'm not as well practiced. I, I don't know if it would go well. It, <laughs> rather than the, the hosts of various shows always want to put it uh, – on me to do a memory feat, I actually rather put it on you and your listeners later. If you're okay. up for it, I have an exercise, the same one that I did at Google, actually. You saw it on the, okay. the talks at Google uh, series that I did. I like to go through that one with you and your listeners. Memorizing the deck of cards, it is like, think of it almost like training for the Olympics, uh, but uh-huh. like the Olympics of the mind and I'm just not in the, the type of condition that I was in when I was, was competing. Um, but I used to be able to do it uh, back then in less than two minutes pretty wow. easily. And now there are guys competing. The top guys nowadays can do it actually in less than 90, even less than 30 seconds. I was doing it in less than 90. They've brought the time down to less than 30 seconds. So the scores just as in physical competitions where, where you're, you'll find the world record, you know, from 10 years ago is far back from the world record nowadays, right? Every year uh, athletes are pushing the limits of what seems to be possible. It's the same thing in these sorts of mental sports uh, as well. 
I want to ask you a question, mate. When did you first realize you had a skill for remembering things? When did it first start to become apparent? So growing up, I often got the comment from people, people would just say to me, wow, you have a really good memory. I was getting that comment a lot. And so one night when I was flipping channels, I happened to catch a segment on ABC's 2020. It was a really popular evening news show here in, in the US. I saw a segment on the United States Memory Championship and it sparked my interest because people were claiming that I had a good memory. But when I looked into what the best people in the country were scoring in the various events in this U.S. memory championship, memorizing decks of cards and minutes, hundreds of names, uh, hundreds of computer-generated random digits, poetry, all in just a few minutes, I quickly realized that although I did have a good memory, I was probably above average, I was nowhere near that level. So that's when I started doing a lot of research into memory training techniques. How can, you know, anyone magnify their memory from where it's currently at? I did a bunch of research. I found what was working best for me personally. I stuck to training myself in that small subset of techniques until eventually I did manage to win the U.S. Memory Championship. And since then, I've spent the last 10 plus years training other people around the world in the small set, set of techniques that I really feel can be most beneficial in one's career, personal life, and also if you might be in school or have any kids in school, this is huge for exams as well. Yeah, right. It's, uh, I mean, that's, it's, it's, an incredible, it's an incredible skill. I think if, if anyone would say, you know, what would you, if we had a magic wand, there's something people would like to be able to remember more things. It serves us in, in so many different ways. But, and that's, I guess, what we're developing sometimes at school. Do you, do you, have you researched or can you tell us a little bit about maybe the neurological pathways and how is it reprogramming the brain? Is it initially programming the brain? Have you looked into it actually how it works? Yeah, so I'm going to hit on a couple of things there. One, as you mentioned, memory really is fundamental to learning, right? It's a fundamental part of learning. So if you improve your ability to remember things, it's going to really impact multiple areas of your life, right? Because it's going to affect your ability to develop new other skills, right? So memory in itself is a skill. I talk about developing memory skills because anyone can develop the ability to do this, and that in turn will help you to learn other new skills. So memory is, is hugely important. In terms of the pathways in the brain, there are many different ways as to how these techniques work, depending on the specific technique that we're using. However, there are always going to be three main, three main principles that memory champions like myself would use. Principle number one, visualization. Tap into your visual memory because we're all pretty good at remembering things that we see. An example that I give, you might run into someone that you could have met years ago, year, many years in the past. Oftentimes, we remember the face. You remember the face, you know that you've met that person somewhere before, but you can't seem to remember the name, right? Yeah. Another related example, let's say you go to a party, all right? and you're meeting a lot of new people at the party, two weeks after it's over, you're talking with one of your friends that attended the party with you, and your friend starts to describe someone to you. You know, your friend says, remember that attorney that we met at the party the other week? He's also a member of Marcus's gym. As they're going through that description, a lot of times you can picture who your friend is describing from the party. Your friend can obviously picture who they're describing, but neither one of you can manage to remember the person's name, right? And it's really frustrating to both of you. A third and final example related to this, how many times have you been describing to a friend or family member an actor from a TV show or movie? As you're going through that description, crystal clear in your mind, you can picture who you're describing, but neither one of you can come up with the actor's name and you're both frustrated by it, right? Those yeah. examples that I gave in relation to names in this case illustrate that we tend to be pretty good at remembering people's faces, 
but not nearly good, as good at remembering the names, it makes sense because when you're interacting with people in various ways, you actually will see the face. The face is recorded into your visual memory, but you don't actually see the name. It's something much more abstract to the brain. So one way that I talk about to get better at remembering names is to turn those names into powerful visuals. That's how at conferences, I will open a lot of times with naming hundreds of people in the audience after just meeting everybody one time. It's by developing that skill of turning the names into visuals. So we want to activate the visual pathways of your brain. That's going to be one thing. Second thing from there, we want to start to involve more and more senses as we can, because as we activate more senses, we're building more and more connections in our, in our mind to the information, and we're activating more areas of our brain, making it easier to retrieve the information later on. So I've been on a lot of different uh, shows. One was PBS Nova Science. It's the longest running science show in the U.S. And these brain scientists came on and they explained for viewers, all right, how did Chester train the host of the show to memorize all that stuff in just a few minutes? How was he able to pull off these feats of memory? And these brain scientists, neuroscientists, mm. confirmed that it's because with these memory techniques that I've mastered and that I teach people, we are recruiting areas of the brain that most people would never involve. With these techniques, we're recruiting more of the brain to help us. And part of this is learning to utilize additional senses in order to activate more of your brain. So add that smell, touch, taste in addition to seeing it. Last principle, third and final principle that will always apply no matter what specific technique is to try and take advantage of the psychological aspect to human memory. And that is all of us with putting forth little to, to no effort at all, we tend to remember things that catch us by surprise, that are weird, out of the ordinary, right? If, if Marcus, where you're at right now, or you know, people that are listening to this podcast right now, wherever they're at, if an elephant suddenly crashed into the room and started to spray water all over you, if that happened right now, you would probably remember that for the rest of your life yeah. and always tell that story. You're never going to believe this. I was listening to this podcast interview out of nowhere, an elephant crashed into the room without you putting forth any effort. And people still, scientists still don't understand today how that works, how in one second something will go straight into long-term memory, whereas other times we have really important stuff. We spend weeks, months trying to get it into our memory and we can't do it, right? Yeah. Although it, is, it might not be fully understood how that works, we realize there is this psychological aspect to memory. So a quick review what I covered there, visualization, additional senses from there, and use your creativity and your imagination to make it all weird, crazy, unusual. When you can put those three principles together, instantly it will become much easier to remember just about anything at all. I think people will be really amazed at what they're able to accomplish when they master those three principles. Incredible. Mate, I want to start from the third one and maybe work our way back up to, to the first. Now, yeah. Not every time that I was learning for a test or in an exam did an elephant crash into my room of study. So how do I get that elephant into the situation? Is there a technique? Is there a way that I can create that psychological situation of that elephant being in the room? Yeah, so what I actually mean is apply that principle of crazy, unusual, extraordinary to the imagery that you will be creating in your mind. And that imagery will, in essence, represent what you want to remember. And it can be even something very complex. I think it's going to be best probably for you and also for the listeners to really understand all, all of these principles if we go through that exercise. So same one that I did for the, the talks at Google program. Um, I'm going to have Marcus yourself and people listening can try to follow along. Just, just do your best. No, no pressure at all. Let's I'm going to have it. you all commit to memory the following random list of words. It's going to be monkey, right? Iron, rope, kite, house, paper, 
shoe, worm, envelope, pencil, river, rock, tree, cheese, and dollar. So that's the list of words, pretty long list. Now, how most people, it's okay, when I do live presentations, people in the audience look at me as if, come on, man, you're, you're crazy. There's no way I'm going to be able to do that, not unless you give me a lot of time to do it. And if I were to give you that as a, a memory task, how most people would approach that, they would just read out the list. They would first write out the list, right? Maybe write it out over and over, recite it over and over, right? Read it continuously until they feel that it's drilled into their head. That is not an effective uh, thing to do in terms of memory, just rote memorization. So instead, what we're going to do is try to put together those three principles that I talked about by creating a crazy story in our mind, right? And you're going you're gonna to just listen to what I described to you, see and experience it happening. If you're laughing, if you're giggling, uh, that's a good sign. If you guys look at my website, you'll see me on CNN memorizing a half deck of cards during the commercial break. If you take, take a look, you'll see I'm laughing, I'm smiling. I think they thought I was crazy when I was on that TNN show, <laughs> but that's, that's kind of the key. Just relax, have fun with it, and you'll pull it off, right? Cool. So the first word was monkey. I want for you all to visualize a monkey. This monkey is dancing around. It's making monkey noises. Visualize that. Boop, 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 boop. Even hear it, whatever monkey would sound like. I'm working on that monkey impression. So just see and hear the monkey, okay? The monkey now picks up a gigantic iron because that was the next word so just see now in your mind the monkey's dancing around with this gigantic iron okay the iron starts to fall but a rope attaches itself to the iron maybe even feel the rope really interact with it maybe it feels sort of rough imagine that you can feel the rope okay now you look up the rope you see the other end of that rope is attached to a kite and it's flying around in the air just maybe even try and touch that kite, reach up there for it. Kite was the next word, okay? Just see this however you can in your mind. Visualize it could be like a movie or cartoon. The kite now crashes into the side of a house. Really see it smash into the house. Picture that. The house you notice is completely covered in paper. Completely covered in paper for some strange reason. Paper was next. Out of nowhere, a shoe appears and it starts to walk all over the paper. Maybe it's messing it up as it's walking on it, that shoe. It smells kind of badly, so you look inside, and you see a little worm crawling around inside of that shoe. Really see the smelly worm. The worm now jumps out of the shoe and into an envelope. Maybe it's going to mail itself or something. I don't know. Envelope was next, okay? You see that. A pencil appears in a thin air, and it starts to write very quickly all over that envelope. Maybe it's addressing it, the pencil, all right? You look at the pencil now, and it jumps into a river, and there's a huge splash. For some reason, when that pencil hits the river, the river, you notice, is crashing up against a giant rock. The rock flies out of the river, and it crashes into a tree, the tree is growing cheese. Probably haven't seen a, a tree like that. This one's growing cheese. And out of each piece of cheese shoots a dollar. Okay, a dollar shoots out. Last word was dollar. That was it. I'm going to run through this again in about 20 seconds. And all you have to do is replay through this little story that you've created in your mind. So we started out with a monkey. The monkey was dancing around with what? It was an iron. What attached itself? It was a rope. The other end of the rope was attached to what? It was a kite. What did the kite crash into? It was a house. What was the house covered in? It was paper. What walked on it? It was a shoe. What was crawling in the shoe? It was a worm. The worm then jumped into an envelope, right? What wrote on the envelope? It was a pencil. The pencil jumped into what for the splash? It was a river. The river crashed into the rock. That flew into a tree. What was it growing? Cheese. And what came out? A dollar. So now, Marcus, just give it your best try. Take, totally take your time. Do this slowly. And people that are listening to the podcast, 
can follow along as well. See if you can recite those words by just playing through that story in your mind, okay? Yeah. And each object that you see will give you the next word. So just give it a try. Do your best. So it goes monkey, iron, rope, kite, house, paper, shoe, worm, envelope, pencil, river, rock, tree, cheese, dollar. That was amazing, man. Awesome. hundred percent under the pressure there too. Sometimes <laughs> when I'm doing a podcast interview or a TV interview or something, and I put the pressure on the host to do that exercise, they, they freak out, but you remained calm, cool, collected. You got it. But because you did so well there, Marcus, because you did so well, <laughs> <No, I'm done. laughs> I, I want to see if you can try, take your time. You can do this slowly. Try to go backwards and people that are watching this or listening to this interview can attempt it as well. Just do your best. Take your time backwards. So dollar, cheese, tree, rock, river, pencil, envelope, worm, shoe, paper, house, kite, rope, iron, monkey. That was amazing, man. That was awesome. That was awesome. That Very right? well done. Backwards. Yeah, you got it right, man. You got it right. Backwards too. So really, really impressive there. I'm sure that people following along, if they didn't get all of them, they'll, they got a huge majority, probably 80 plus percent correct there. So that's yeah. just one of the techniques that memory champions like myself use. At first, it seems like, you know, when they have, they've had me on a bunch of different news programs, most recently BBC World News, they'll have me come on and perform what at first seems like to everyone in a, wow, an amazing memory feat, but there's nothing different about my brain at all compared to everyone else's. Yeah. I have just learned these types of techniques that, as you can see, are very powerful and very effective. And I put in that little bit of training and practice. Anybody is capable of doing this. Toward the end of the interview, whenever you think we're, we're at maybe like the 10 minute mark, we'll do something else uh, in about, you know, a few, two or three minutes that'll show how this applies to even complex types of information. But I wanted to give people a sense. So now you, know, you have a better idea of what I'm talking about, how you will put those principles of visualization, additional senses, making that whole scenario was crazy weird, right? Yeah. Uh, so now you get more of an idea of what I was talking about there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very interesting the, when you start to create that story. But do we, like when you said the words the first time, obviously you're just rattling them off and you finish those words in about 15 seconds. When we attach a story to something, we, we create a situation. And then, as you said, there's that visualization. But I guess some people are thinking exactly what I'm thinking. Like, that was great because... It was like 15 seconds and then Chester told a full story. Like, of course, I'm going to remember a full story. I know there's a little bit more to it, but how can we, how do we remember people's names when we, I mean, I saw your TED talk and you remembered a hundred people's names and you've met them for a split second. Is it really just training the same systems over and over or is there like, how does it really work? Yeah, totally. Uh, very good question there. So one thing, yeah, I guided you through the story because again, really what one of the most important things I think people need to realize as they're watching this episode of the podcast, what we are talking about on this episode are memory skills. All right. So these are skills that you're going to develop. So you've learned only one technique at this point, right? That implements those three principles that we talked about, the visualization, additional senses, making it crazy, unusual, extraordinary. We put those three principles into practice with one technique, the story method. Now, it's going to take you a bit of time because you just learned it. As you develop the skill, you will actually be able to create that story as the person is rattling off the words. Right. You will be that fast. Okay, so this is very practical. I teach executives to implement this, to remember more information from business meetings, meetings with clients, potential clients, as a, you have a bunch of people uh, talking, you're trying to keep track with all of your notes, but if you can quickly file that away mentally, yeah. you're going to absorb more information and get more out of it. So that was one thing I wanted to address. Keep in mind, you just started now, 
as you develop the skill, it's going to become more automatic for you and, and obviously more useful to you in business, personal life, and in school. Yeah. Now, the names, it's a whole nother technique, right? So, you know, I have an entire online memory school that right. teaches you this stuff that consists of two main core. Each course has more than six hours of interactive training. There's a core training course. There's an advanced training course, and then there's ongoing training every single month. So keep in mind that there's a lot of stuff <laughs> to learn, right? Um, so it would be a totally different technique for names. Right. Okay. But, but the same principles will apply. So when I'm meeting people, I ask myself, one thing I do is ask myself, how to me does this particular person look unique it could be a particular facial feature could be something about their look overall and i'll try to exaggerate that in my mind and attach an image that in some way will remind me of the name so i'm at, let's say i'm attending a conference i'm meeting a woman there at the conference and to me I'm, when i ask myself what what's noticeable i think she has really beautiful hair that's just noticeable to me I would then want to focus in on her hair, okay? If her name, for instance, is Jane, I might then imagine that her hair is actually made of chains and the chains are clacking together, making a really loud noise. Maybe some sort of aroma is even emitting from the chain. So again, all of those main principles will apply that I talked about. Yeah. But we're approaching it in a completely different way. The implementation is different. So how this works is the next time I see her, right, let's say I'm seeing her later at, um, you know, a different seminar or something, right, at the conference. All I have to do is ask myself, okay, what's noticeable about her look? What I personally noticed about her look before is very likely what I will notice again that imagery is going to come right back to me of the chains in her hair, right? Chain might remind you of Jane. Okay. Wow. So, and you know, if I'm meeting someone named Mike, I might use a microphone that would remind me of Mike. If I'm meeting someone named Alice, sometimes I use a white rabbit because that might remind me of Alice in Wonderland. Wow. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of how this works. That's just one of many visual based techniques for names. And in my, uh, online memory school I actually will simulate introducing you to people so you're going to have a slideshow this is Jane this is you know Mike this is Alice and so on so you'll really develop that skill like that's incredible it's it's, it's all so fascinating and and, and I, I have so many questions and I, what, what I want to jump to the second point that you said because I think this is super important where you spoke about recruiting more senses, recruiting more of the brain. Now, we've proven in that exercise, and lots of people understand about visualization, and when we attach these, these visual things, talk to us about more senses. How do we, what are these more senses that we're talking about, and how do we recruit them? Yeah, so there, there's a lot to it. I covered, you know, the very basics um, so far, but as you get deeper and deeper in developing the skill, you can just add so many more components to make this all more effective and to increase your speed, right, when you're trying to commit things to memory. So really what I meant there was just as opposed to just seeing the chains, right, in the person's hair, You've only got a visual. Imagine that you can even smell the chains. Maybe right. even you imagine that you're feeling the chains. That's what I mean because, believe it or not, it's very interesting. People can read up on this later on. They've done research that proves when they have someone touch something, for instance, they can see exactly what area of the brain lights up. Yes. They will, then, they will then have that same person merely imagine that they touch something and that same exact area of the brain will light up. So in fact, yeah, it's amazing. So in fact, when you are doing that, 
you are activating all of these different areas of your brain when you're adding the other senses to the stuff that you're experiencing in your head. In addition, related, they've done research with athletes where they will have athletes actually, instead of physically going on the field and playing baseball, for instance, just visualize an entire training session, an entire practice session, and they can see, although it might not have 100% the same effectiveness, it has a high degree of effectiveness just going through a totally visualized practice session. So hopefully that gives you a little bit more of an idea of what I meant by, you know, adding yeah. more to the visuals, more emotion is also important, more action. There's, uh, you can get deeper and deeper with this as you develop these memory skills. We are essentially a health and fitness podcast. We're the biggest health and fitness podcast in the region. So it would not, it would, it would be wrong if I didn't ask you ways that you believe we can use our memory to enhance our health and fitness. Now, I'm trying to bring a connection very fast, and I'm not sure I can do it, with memory and weight loss. But is there, a, is there a, in your opinion, Chester, is there a relationship? How can we create something with the memory that can help us to lose weight or help us not to eat bad food or help us to train and help us not to be lazy? Can we correlate anything in that way? Uh, totally. You know, that part of why I wanted to be on your podcast, Marcus, is because there is such a huge mind-body connection. Since we've, you know, connected on LinkedIn and Instagram, I've been seeing your posts, and I, I mean, I really love, I'm very impressed at what you're doing and you. what I see your community, some of your posts from your community. Um, you. It's all really impressive. The mind and body are intricately link so it's actually going to go in both directions and in one way let's first go from memory to the body you know people for instance are doing the exercises the wrong way and you tell them remember this this and this or you, you know you give them these little tips here yeah. and there right these yeah. types of techniques even the simple story method actually that we went over so far can be applied to memorizing, you know, five, 10 tips from your trainer. When you're working out later on your own, what, what did Marcus say again? Ah, I've got that visual that reminds me that he said this and this and this, these were the five things that I wanted to keep in mind. So it definitely will work in that direction. Mm. It will work in the reverse direction as well. And that is that when you are really working on your body, it's going to have a tremendously positive impact on your memory. All right. Because a healthy body equals a healthy mind. There's no getting around that. In addition, physical activity can be used to enhance memory and learning. So I actually recommend if you're studying for a really important presentation, company presentation, or you, you've landed a meeting with your dream client and you just want that to go well, you want to make sure that you say this, this, and this, you want to seem very knowledgeable you want to make sure that they know that you're you are the go-to expert your company is is the uh company when preparing for something like that really important i actually recommend that you study your notes while moving around uh maybe wow. while reading it even while jogging or uh listen to your notes while you're while you're jogging or running or maybe you're on the treadmill or something because that aerobic activity uh, is going to improve the information getting into your long-term memory. My, you took a look at my TED talk. I did uh, TEDx Bay Area with a lot. There were a lot of famous professors there. One was from NYU. I really related to her talk, Dr. Wendy Suzuki. She wrote a brain called. Uh, she wrote a book called Healthy Brain, Happy Life. That's right. uh, healthy brain yeah happy life was is her book and i really related to her talk because when i was studying in college i instinctively i hadn't done any research but i had just instinctively realized that when i was moving around reading my notes like walking around my apartment i tend to learn things better and that's what her talk covered that 
physical movement, aerobic activity is going to help enhance learning and memory. So there is a strong body mind connection for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's interesting what you say, because the, 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 the two, like, sometimes I find that physical exercise whilst listening to something can distract me, but sometimes like I can be distracted because I'm very focused on the physical exercise, but sometimes actually remember it more and I'll link what I've been listening to, whether it's a podcast or something to a particular run and some information, maybe to a particular location that I was at during the run for two or three days afterwards. So yeah, I, I remember this lady was saying such and such as I passed that house and we sort of, I guess, I guess we un subconsciously create this connection because of what we see. And that's, that's what you're talking about with the senses as well. There's a lot more sensory things going on at that time. Yeah, absolutely. I wanted to ask you, Chester, obviously over a, a lot of your work and you're incredibly impressive on the stage. You're a speaker, you're a motivator, you, I, 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 even watching the videos, you can see people's faces when you remember certain things. Now, with what's transpired over the last few months with the COVID-19 pandemic, things must have really changed for you because that ability to be in big groups and essentially show off your, essential, your amazing skill set has changed. I, how are you still doing what you do and how does it change through like what we're on at the moment, a Zoom call or through a new way of operating? What is the new way of operating for someone like you? Yeah, very good question, Marcus. So yeah, I'm in a, in a field, one of those fields that, was, that has been tremendously impacted in that my main uh, work is international speaker at corporate events and conferences all around the world. I've given presentations now in more than 30 countries. I actually was a speaker in Dubai at one point for the CFA Society of Emirates. Um, I, I love that trip to Dubai. Uh, and I've actually been going back just for personal trips since, since then because I enjoyed it so much. Um, yeah, it's, it's hugely impacted because there won't be, we don't know when they, even as places, various cities around the world start to open up, we don't know when they're going to allow large events again, such as conferences and corporate events. Yeah. So I have been doing some uh, virtual seminars. Basically, my presentations have not changed at all, other than I have to cut out the demonstration portion. Okay. Because it just it, there just really isn't an, an an effective way to do the eye catching uh, memory demonstrations over yeah. the internet, right? So I can't yeah. do that. Uh, you know, my most famous demonstration is the one where I name hundreds of people uh, yeah. in the audience. That's obviously not possible over a Zoom call. And then even other demonstrations that I sometimes do, it's just not. Um, as effective virtually because people don't know do I have no do I have a cue card somewhere in front of me or you know you don't, virtually you don't know what's going on oh, yeah. whereas uh, obviously when I'm there in person at the conference people see it's just me and my brain right there's nothing else uh, nothing else there um, so that that's about it uh, I have done some uh, virtual presentations where I'll just cut out the first part and get into more training people, uh, training the other people, right? Um, and they can just watch the video uh, to see the demonstration portion, like a pre-recorded uh, video. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's, it's an adjustment, but I'm, I'm, I, I almost said I like it. I don't like it to be honest. I mean, <laughs> right? I'm, not, I'm not going to BS you at all. I, yeah. Obviously, I don't like the situation that I'm in, but there is, as, as I mentioned to you at the beginning, um, when we started talking at the beginning of the call, there is an opportunity here there, though for me. And that's what I'm trying to look at. I'm really trying to focus on the positive and the fact that this can add an entire new aspect to my business. Yeah. And that is this whole vir virtual and digital marketing, which I hadn't really focused on for the 10 plus years. So I think in the end, this yeah. could be 
a win for for my business overall. W once I am able to make the adjustments and figure this all out, the new the new world that we're in, you know. Absolutely, mate. You asked me to tell you when we're in the last ten minutes. We're into the last ten minutes. Did you want to try something else out on me? Is is that what I'm setting myself up for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you're doing great, Marcus. And so you're you're a good guinea pig. For <laughs> and you know, and I think it makes it more enjoyable for people following along to see you know you you doing it. So we're gonna try to do another quick exercise. This one really will be less than three minutes to demonstrate that it's not just monkey, iron, rope, right? That this can be applied to useful business information, things that are more complex. It's about building mental note cards or mental cue cards. And it will become more clear what I'm talking about as we go through the exercise. Okay. So just visualize what I described to you, Marcus. I want you to visualize some giant machines. Whatever that looks like to you, visualize some giant machines. These giant machines are smashing up a huge pile of gold and silver, right? They're smashing up a huge pile of gold and silver. Rising up out of the gold and silver, vehicles. You see vehicles rising up. Shooting out of the windows of the vehicles, medicine, okay? And exploding out of the medicine, oil probably black petroleum oil is easiest to visualize. That was it. I'm going to run through this again. This one's quick and easy. We had at first what? Giant machines. The giant machines were smashing up a huge pile of gold and silver. What rose up? Vehicles. What shot out of the windows? It was medicine. What exploded out of the medicine? It was oil. Go ahead and give it a try. So there's big machinery yeah and it's smashing up gold and silver mm -hmm. and out of the gold and silver came oh dear uh, a vehicle you got it and now i'm lost but then something there was medicine you got it and with the medicine there was oil 100 percent, man you got it perfectly is that right yeah, why that, that was one was a lot harder yeah, uh, yeah, it's a little bit, it was a bit tougher there. You weren't sure if you got it, but you did. You got it 100% correct. And I mean, just one or two reviews, that will take you like a minute to review it mentally and you would have it down perfectly. What you've just memorized there and people following along, you've all just memorized the top five exports of the UK. So if you, yeah, without realizing it. So if you were to look that up right now, what are the UK's top exports? Wow. You'll see listed, you're going to see listed machinery, precious metals, vehicles, pharmaceuticals, and oil. So you'll see how each image doesn't need to perfectly match what you're trying to remember you're basically just building mental note cards or mental cue cards. And again, when you're meeting with clients, potential clients, or it's a presentation in front of your colleagues, when you have these five, 10, 15 key things committed to memory, people are more impressed with you. They're like, wow, you know, this person really knows their stuff. You're yeah. better able to demonstrate your expertise. And in today's business world, right, in today's society where the average person can't remember that much at all anymore because we're yeah. outsourcing our memory to these electronic devices, when you develop your memory skills, even to a small degree, you're so much more impressive. You are more memorable in business, right? People are more impressed with you. They're more likely to remember you as an expert in your field. And yeah. again, this is just the beginning. You know, we've spent probably less than 10 minutes on the techniques training so far, right? And if people want to learn more, they can check out memoryschool.net. I would visualize a gigantic, maybe like fishing net. So you remember that it's .net. And I actually set up, uh, I set up code Marcus for you, Marcus, in honor of you. I sent up a, a coupon code allowed for 25 uses. You have to indicate how many times you're going to let it work. So the first 25 people that use that code Marcus at memoryschool.net will have no enrollment fee at all. Oh, so wow. there's normally a $200 enrollment fee. You will not have to pay. That will be wiped out to zero 
with that discount code. So hopefully people will check it out. It's going to benefit you in many different ways. I'll, um, I'll stick that in the show notes for people. Just scroll down whatever device you're, you're listening on or go over to the website, innerfight.com slash podcast podcast 634 and you'll get that that's very kind chester thank you very much for that mate i want to finish up with with actually two questions one wasn't on my list of questions but you've just put it into my mind which is about how our memories are perhaps changing because of devices because we can get everything we can get the answer to pretty like it's very interesting to know the five biggest exports of the uk but Generally, if someone asks me that, I can probably Google it real fast and get it. What's your thoughts on that? Is there a, like, are we in a bad situation where we're not being forced to train and exercise our brains when it comes to memory because of these devices? Is it bad? Or what should we, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I do. Uh, I think we're in an age of dangerous digital dependency is what I like to call it. You'll hear me use that. Uh, terminology in some of my talks, depending on what what the organization is, but sometimes <laughs> I'll refer to dangerous digital dependency. Um, it's very true. An example that I'll give: phone numbers. We all used to be able to remember the phone numbers of so many yeah. friends, members. I remember growing up, my parents would give me emergency numbers that they thought were important for me to know. We all used to be able to do that. Nowadays, you give someone even one phone number and they feel completely paralyzed. They cannot even commit one number to memory. It's a very good example of the use it or lose it principle as it applies to memory. Another one, navigation, GPS. Mm. So, you know, New York City and London taxi drivers were world famous for their memory ability, so much so that universities were doing research on their brains. But it's becoming less and less common even for taxi drivers to have that navigation ability. I've gotten into a taxi in San Francisco where I live, asked them to take me to the Civic Center. Anybody should know how to get there. But if there, something's wrong with the network connection or something's wrong with the app, they cannot get there. You have to pull over. They'll restart their phone a few times. Uber and Lyft, this has happened to me many times in Uber and Lyft. Even if that driver has been driving for Uber for five years already in that city, if something's wrong with the app at that time or, you know, they need to restart their phone because of the network connection, you just have to pull over somewhere and hope that things resolve themselves because they haven't even learned a few streets after five years because they've completely turned off their brain, right, to become dependent on that GPS. So there is a danger in too much digital dependency. In the case of like the exports, I just gave an example there of something kind of random, but you would decide once you would develop the skills, you would know what information would be beneficial to you to know when you're getting into a meeting again with a potential client. For instance, I I've been a one-man business now for 12 plus years, and I've had to hire, you know, web people, PR people, all sorts of attorneys, all sorts of different professionals. Granted, I'm a little bit on the extreme end given what I do, but if I meet with someone and I'm asking them something and they say, hold on, let me, uh, let me Google that really quickly. Yeah. And I, and I ask them something else, you know, I ask them something else that I need done as part of this project. And they say, um, hold on. Uh, I've done a little bit of, let, let me Google it really quick. Oh yeah, it's this. I personally will never hire that person. Yeah. Because to me, they, yeah, they can get by, they can do the job probably for me, but, but they're clearly not the expert, right? They're clearly not the expert. I want to hire the person when I meet with them and they're like, yeah, it's this and this. And by the way, did you hear about this? And I'm just blown away by their knowledge, right? What is in their mind, not what they're able to look up, right? Yeah. I perceive that person to be an expert. And in those cases, I've actually gone out of my way. I remember I did it a couple of years ago, the particular case, it was for social media, it was for Instagram marketing, where I went out of the way to pay more than I originally budgeted for that particular project because I was just so impressed with the person's knowledge. Wow, you know? yeah, incredible. Very good story. And well, well hammered home point there, folks. We need to commit more to memory, train the skills of learning things rather than train the skills of our thumbs. Just that I really appreciate your time. I'm going to link everything up in the show notes. 
I'm going to link to your Instagram. Folks can go over there, watch Chester's TED Talks. As he said, one of his, what I would just say is his best party trick is he names every single person in the audience. I was just like, this is literally mind blowing. But mate, before we, before we part ways, I have one final question for you. You've offered up a lot of advice here. You've obviously learned a lot in your life and met a lot of very interesting people as well. If, and I'm sure people will take away the memory skills, those two things that, that you showed us and you demonstrated on me, and I will definitely. But if there's one piece of advice, your key best piece of advice that you can leave the listeners with, what would that be? Great question. I would say my best piece of advice, I mean, related to my field and also to your, yours as well, really is that everyone no matter where you might be at in terms of your current memory ability or your current physical condition, wherever you're at now, really, if you will just put forth that effort to learn the right techniques, put in that training and practice, use the right approach combined with practice, you're going to see an improvement. You know, I've been amazed at what I've seen over the years from my clients amazing things they've been able to accomplish. I've seen results from the posts from your community as well. It's just using that right approach and putting in that work. If you make that decision, you can do really, really impressive things that might not seem to be possible now, but you just, you just have to get started. Absolutely. It's really, and that in that mate, you've proven that it's just training the mind, same as we train the body. And that's why people should hop over to your site and have a look at, at what's on offer there. And I think if people do, and they should want to train their mind to, to remember more key things to progress in life, then it, it sounds like you've got the tools. Absolutely. Thank you again for having me, Marcus. Thanks a lot, Chester. I really appreciate it. I will link everything in the show notes. You're absolute champion and very impressive, mate. Thank you. I look forward to keeping in touch. Thanks a lot, Mark. Awesome. Thanks, buddy.